Hunilta. My name is Trevor Mack, and you are listening to Medicine Stream. So Medicine Stream is a stream of consciousness regarding a singular idea, and then just as a creek meets a river and the river meets the ocean, this idea is expanded upon on a societal macro level and brought back to the personal level in which we all can relate to. Unista means how are you? How are you doing? In the Tsaifkotin language. So the Tsaifkotin, otherwise known as Chilcotin people. Tsaifkotin means people of the river. People of the river meaning people of the Chilcotin River, the Tesico River, as well as the Fraser River. All of these river systems were traditional places in which the people that I grew up with and that I call my family grew up around and grew up with that identity of being people of the river because our culture revolves around our spatial relationship with these rivers, gatherings, celebrations. We're all taking place, especially in August, September time when the salmon would come up. So that is when our people would get together all along the rivers Whichever river, there were all these Chilcotin people laughing together, smiling together, catching fish and sharing them. And so that's who we are as a people. Unfortunately, I'm not near any streams that feed any of these rivers in my nation. However, I am sitting above a very beautiful creek and sitting below these very beautiful waterfalls that are shimmering down illuminated by these spotlights piercing through these beautiful yellow cedars that are probably nearly a thousand years old that are towering right over us I feel very protected I feel very nourished I feel very grateful to look up and as far as I can see I can see little mini waterfalls all the way up and I look down I see little mini pools that have gathered that tree roots have created so what I did there is I described this creek in a spatial sense instead of telling you the name of the creek instead of telling you the story behind this creek because that would be placing a temporal relationship to this creek today we're talking about temporal versus spatial relationships having said that the temporal description of this creek this creek has been given the name of Bunsen Creek. Now, Bunsen is probably a man who once walked by this creek. And I don't really know the story because this is something that I, I wanted to get across with this episode in particular. So the Bunsen Creek feeds into Bunsen Lake. This lake is located in the Tsleil-Waututh and Coquitlam territories, kind of right on the border of Coquitlam and mostly in Tsleil-Waututh Nation. And so these nations are north of Burnaby, British Columbia, Canada, as well as kind of make up the surrounding areas of the lower mainland. I was very fortunate in growing up in the Tsleil-Waututh Nation and my Inquel, my mother brought me all of these events and gatherings that would be happening all around the nation meeting and learning from elders 
playing with all of the other kids while their parents were off fishing and however as, however as I got older I ended up living in a town called Williams Lake which is on Sequatmec territory and after graduating high school I moved down to the Coast Salish territories a familiar term would be called Vancouver and so when I moved down to Vancouver I was away I was displaced from the culture that I grew up in as a child and um, I was very much enveloped and encapsulated by this this new culture that I stumbled upon <coughs> coming from a very small town an even smaller reserve I was encapsulated by all of the shiny shiny new things that were in front of my eyes and and what ended up happening was uh, I, I fell into a spiral of suppressing the traumas that I didn't know I necessarily had and that involved a lot of drinking it involved a lot of partying it involved being not a very good person at all to a lot of people in my life and I, w I was obsessed with creating a name for myself within the film industry. I was obsessed with the historical records of famous film directors and powerful men that have came before me. And I wanted to make a name for myself. I wanted my name in lights and I wanted to be remembered. And this temporal way of thinking and and this and this and it got to such a point where in in June of 2016 I was actually hospitalized I was mugged and assaulted one night on a on a on a night that I went drinking so leading up to this, I would just go drinking by myself at night. I would go to bars by myself. I would go to clubs by myself. It got to that point where it was it was it was really bad. And in this particular night, I I remember trying to catch a cab at about three o'clock in the morning and very very blurry, it near blackout. And and then and then I remember two men on either side of me talking really fast very blurry I can't really remember and they're talking really fast and the next thing I remember is I woke up kind of right at, like right out of a movie I woke up being rolled through the hospital Vancouver General Hospital with in a hospital bed with three police officers looking down on me and I opened my eyes and I just, I immediately held out my hand to this one particular officer. And she looked down on me and I looked up at her and I'll never forget how I felt in that moment. So lost and so scared and so confused. And I looked down at me, I was in a hospital robe. And... I remember feeling my mouth and I my jaw was broken and I remember feeling my bone my jawbone was sticking into my mouth and I remember playing with my jawbone with my tongue so much pain and my mouth was so swollen and there was dry blood all over my face I ended up getting three reconstructive jaw surgeries done I had my jaw wired shut for three whole months and I'm super grateful for my mother, my aunt, my uncle that was all looking after me. And in that time being bedridden 
I had to feed myself with a straw because I couldn't open my mouth and it gave me a lot of time to think about my past decisions and those past decisions were essentially suppressing all of this trauma that was building up in me and I was essentially enamored by all of these external temporal relationships with the world and with reality that I wasn't dealing with these traumas that I had and since then I've been super grateful on meeting some incredible and beautiful people along my journey of healing been walking the red road if you will as a couple of elders in my life talk about And the biggest revelation, you could say, that has changed my entire perspective of reality has been shattering a lens that I've been looking through my entire life up to that point. So I was looking through life in a temporal lens, a temporal relationship to the planet, to Mother Earth. And now, since I've been healing and finding medicine through being on the land and by water and by building relationships with similar people who are healing through being on the land and following the natural laws of the universe. I have found myself becoming a much more happier person and when you shatter that temporal lens you begin to see the world through a spatial relationship. All right, now I want to talk about how, how water flows and how each episode of Medicine Stream will flow differently. Some streams take tens of kilometers to reach rivers. Some rivers take thousands of kilometers to reach the ocean. And some streams immediately fall into the ocean through beautiful cascading waterfalls and so I am around all of these beautiful mini waterfalls on this stream and this is the kind of flow of the conversation that we're going to experience in this episode of medicine stream we're gonna get right into this idea on a macro level so Vine Deloria jr. in his book God is Red expands upon the idea, this duality, if you will, of temporal versus spatial relationships to reality and to Mother Earth. So money is something that is a concept. It doesn't necessarily exist. It doesn't actually physically, tangibly exist. So let's let's exponentiate what money is. There are so many different concepts that have been built from the foundation of what money is. We have mortgages, we have debts, we have dividends. And so when you keep on multiplying this concept, when you keep on exponentiating it, we end up with the stock market. And then we end up with the economy on a macro level. And so these, these are concepts built on nothing, really. They don't actually exist. The economy doesn't actually exist. The stock market doesn't actually exist. Dividends don't actually exist. Now you can argue that houses exist. You can argue that products that are sold in the economy exist, but those are different from the actual descriptions of what dividends, of what mortgages. These are just things made up. And we're able to keep on making things up because they take place in a temporal way of experiencing reality. And so an example of what a temporal relationship with 
the planet would be and with reality would be is we have a story we have a story and somebody says two thousand years ago these brave women trekked upon this mountain and, and did something amazing on this mountain so now this mountain is named after the, the, the captain the woman captain and so now let's flip the coin and let's describe this story in a spatial relationship and many indigenous religiosities view the world and view reality through a spatial lens so just as how I introduced myself with being a Tychotin person a people of the river and to get even more specific I grew up on Tledingko which means the plateau by the Chilcotin River these are terms that mean that have a reciprocal relationship with the planet in our identity as people that same scenario would be described as a long time ago some people did something on this mountain and that's why this mountain is sacred and usually the name of that mountain in a lot of indigenous perspectives a name of that mountain would be related to how that mountain exists in a spatial sense and um, this mountain controls the weather or everything that we love comes from this mountain because we can eat the salmon that spawn on the creeks that are born from this mountain these are relationships that are tangibles this euro western colonial matrix as the philosopher Kyle Powis White describes our current civilization as revolves around a temporal way of looking at reality where time and people within that are what's important or is is time is given the most importance over everything who controls the most who is the greatest leader in human history we look at our relationship to the earth via something called human history which if you really think about it is is is, is like a cosmic joke human history what is human history anyway we as a species have been around for hundreds of thousands of years we tend to see our own history separate from every other living thing on this planet human history and and we place this human history above uh, the history of insects above the history of rocks the history of deer you know we those are not placed with the same gravitas as human history right we have all of these years we have all of these stories we have all of these names that we name mountains and we name monuments and we name cities after great human and and that's something that vine deloria jr really expands upon in his book god is red and how our whole society is based off of these relationships with time that is much different than many indigenous relationships all over the world so what happens when that relationship that temporal relationship with reality what happens when it just goes unchecked it goes non-stop it keeps exponentiating it keeps exponentiating just as how I was drinking it started from it started from drinking and then it moved to going to bars by myself and then it kept on going it kept on going it kept on going but these suppressed traumas these collective traumas on a societal and civilizational level go unchecked and what these collective traumas are 
are these relationships that are built upon nothing that is tangible. These relationships become superficial. These relationships include people identifying themselves with their job, people identifying themselves with their favorite sports team, people identifying themselves with the town that they live in that is named after some white guy. So what's happening now within Canada, the United States, Europe, and these capitalistic societies that place their relationship to the planet and their relationship to reality through the temporal lens of capitalism is this endless exponentiation of concepts that on a on a world that isn't endless on a world that can't be exponentiated so now if we look at the world through a spatial relationships we can see that we can't multiply our mountains we can't multiply our lakes we can't multiply our rivers we can't multiply our streams and so this is why growing up as a Taiko teen person we had to protect these rivers and these streams and these lakes within our nation because our entire relationship with the world was built upon these rivers and these lakes and these streams our identity as a Taiko team person as a person of the rivers was built around the tangibles of our world and so what we're seeing now with this Euro Western colonial civilization is that it's coming to a tipping point where this endless exponentiation on a finite resource system is happening and what I'm really interested in is environmental movements such as Extinction Rebellion such as Greenpeace to name the big ones and and so now if you remember in the news a lot of mass political move a lot of mass environmental movements were happening around the world the student strikes where hundreds of thousands of people in cities all across the globe were striking because they wanted to do something about this tipping point that's happening which was really great to see as an indigenous person to see millions of people standing up for mother earth was really heartwarming and it was really amazing however it got me thinking because a lot of these people growing up in the euro western colonial matrix of society what happens is when when you grow up in a society that when you grow up in a society that has a temporal relationship with the world the only solutions that you see are temporal the only solutions you see are within the bubble that you grew up in and your ancestors and your ancestors and your ancestors grew up in so now what's happening with a lot of these vast environmental movements is the solutions are still based within a temporal relationship with the planet. So instead of completely overthrowing this conceptual capitalistic system, a lot of these environmental movements and moves towards greening societies and greening cities doesn't get down to the level to the very very deep level of where the entire perception of reality is coming from this temporal way of looking at the planet which is based off of human history and based off of time rather than space 